Liability in defamation is predicated on publishing a defamatory imputation. The general rule is that anyone in the chain of publication can be liable and held responsible for defamatory imputations that are published. This broad general liability is important in the mass media era where publishers of print media or broadcasters of television or radio can be held liable for the content that they publish even though they don't create or even potentially exercise editorial control over the content of those communications. This broad principle also applies to the internet. So it means, for example, the people who publish defamatory statements on the internet can certainly be held liable. But so too can the intermediaries who help them publish those communications. So, for example, the content hosts that host web pages, or the websites that provide forums for people to post comments, can all be held to be publishers under defamation law and are all potentially primarily liable for the dissemination of, of defamatory information. Some Australian courts have even found intermediaries liable for linking to defamatory content. So, for example, in one case, Visha, the intermediary was liable for publishing an article about a story and linking to a story that contained defamatory imputations with the words, read more. Those words, the court found, implied that the intermediary accepted the value of those of the linked publications and therefore accepted responsibility if they did in fact turn out to be defamatory. Other Australian courts have adopted this wide principle to find intermediaries liable for purely technical or automatic publications. So, for example, Yahoo conceded in one case that because at least one person had read an article hosted on a third unrelated website by following a link presented through the Yahoo search engine, that meant that Yahoo had published that article and was therefore liable in defamation for any defamatory imputations that it carried. And Google was liable when its image search engine returned results that suggested that a plaintiff was associated with several underworld figures. Ultimately, defamation law is extremely broad and its extent's uncertain in Australia at the moment. An intermediary may be liable for publishing defamatory imputations merely for refusing or failing to remove the content when they have some power to do so. By not acting to remove content, intermediaries can be liable on the basis that they have accepted the continued publication of defamatory imputations. The primary limit to an intermediary's potential liability for defamation comes from a lack of knowledge of the defamatory imputations. Where a defendant did not know and ought not to have known about the existence of a defamatory imputation, they will not be liable, either because they may not be a publisher of the imputation, or they may be able to rely on the defence of innocent dissemination. What this means, ultimately, in Australia, is that intermediaries who have some power over potentially defamatory imputations are under a strong, strict duty to remove the content once they have notice of it. Although the law is rapidly evolving, at the moment it currently applies not only to content hosts, but also to search engines and other intermediaries who make content available, accessible or indexable. These rules create a great deal of uncertainty for Australian intermediaries and mean that many intermediaries refuse to provide services within Australia, preferring to host content from offshore. This also raises serious potential speech implications as intermediaries are under a duty to determine whether or not an imputation is defamatory. This could result in the unfair and unwarranted removal of content that has not actually been deemed by a court to be defamatory. On the other hand, there is no denying the effectiveness of the law for those intermediaries that do have an Australian presence in forcing them to remove content upon notification that it may be defamatory.